This has been a pretty highly requested video, and I've wanted to check this shape out for a while now, so uh, when Active Kendama got in touch with me and wanted me to review a couple of their damas, I was pretty stoked. Active Kendamas uh, is a fairly new company, but they've been doing some really cool stuff with the community. Um, and this is their Elite V4 shape. So they've already been through four different shapes. Um, and I think they're a pretty cool brand. Opening up the box, and we got some Kendamas. So I believe they sent me four, uh, which is pretty, pretty sweet. <laughs> um, and these all look super cool. So here are the four Kendamas Active sent out to me to unbox and review. Uh, and since there are four of them, I'm gonna try and do this kind of quickly, uh, but drop as many specs and as much information as I can on each of them as we unbox and go through them. But to get a few broad things out of the way first, these pro models are maple wood, and these two are beech wood. They're all on the V4 shape, uh, which is their newest shape, and they all have sticky clear paint on them too. Active also offers, I think, most of these in satin clear paint as well. So if you're a fan of satin clear, still check out the website because I think a lot of their kendamas are offered in both sticky and satin clear. <sighs> the hardest part of these videos is where to start. Oh, these all look so good. All right, I'm not gonna lie. These two excite me the most over the pro models. I don't know why. I love the beech wood and the design. I really like the colorways. Uh, and we'll just, we'll just get into these first and then move on to the pro models after them. So these two Kendamas are from Active's Pokemon series, or Pokemon inspired series, if I've, you wanna get technical. This is the Vine Whip model, and this is the Thunderbolt model. The Vine Whip model is based off of the Pokemon Bulbasaur, and the Thunderbolt model is based off of Pikachu. So their colorways and Tama designs kind of reflect that. Going into the package, you have the Kendama, and you also have, uh, looks like a spare string, and... A sticker that I just bent horribly. Something I noticed off the bat too, which is really cool, is the string they include is like the signature color they put on the Kendama, which is cool. It's not like a generic black or white string. And it also has an extra bearing bead on it. And these Kendamas are on the cheaper side of the spectrum. They're only $25 each. And it's kind of a stupid thing that companies don't do this, but a lot don't include a bearing bead with their lower end models. So out of the package, it looks like we have a very long string, easily six, seven finger string, Perfect, that's awesome. I won't have to trim this, I won't have to get rid of it. It's awesome that this is a long string, a uh, bearing bead, and it really, just holding it feels really nice quality wise. I think the design is nice, it's clean, it's simple. Uh, this is one of my favorite colorways I think that we got today. So I'm really stoked on this one and I'm really excited to play it. Before we get too much into the shape, let's get the rest of them opened. Moving on to the Thunderbolts. Pretty much the same deal, you get a sticker and a string. Uh, this string is yellow though, instead of the aqua kind of green that this one came with, which is super cool. I love that they're including bonus colored strings and the fact that they have colored strings at all is really cool. Looking at the Thunderbolt model, I might have to take back about what I said about the Bulbasaur one because this design looks so cool. I didn't really get to look at the bottom sort of orange fade around the bottom of the bevel here. That looks so clean. I really like the design of this. It's very like minimal, but it really pops. Seriously, really good job from Active Kendama on Oh, the overall just, you know, presentation, and they really do feel like higher quality Kendamas for pretty reasonable price. Okay, so there are the two Beach Kendama models. Now let's move on to the Pro Mods. We have the Steven Bach Pro Model and the Tiblex Mod. I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. He's an insane player. I follow him on Instagram, uh, but I'm just gonna butcher his name so hard. I'm just gonna call this the Tiblex Mod and this the Steven Bach Pro Mod. Opening up the Tiblex Mod, we have the Kendama, and kind of the same story as the other ones. Uh, an extra string and bearing bead, and a sticker as well. So really the only difference between the Pro Mods and the sort of standard models they have is the wood type. These come on maple, and these are usually on beach. Uh, you're gonna pay a bit more for the Pro Mods, but that's just what comes with having a more premium wood on the Kendama. Aside from the wood types being different, you also get some custom wood burns on the Kens for the Pro Models as opposed to the standard mods. The one that really sticks out to me on this one is this giant 18 in the big cup. You also have the word Tiblex right here on the Serato in the middle, and the word Tap on the base cup. The colorway on the Tom is pretty unique. If you're really into like colors and just kind of standing out, this might be the design for you. You have this really bright green ring around the bevel, uh, then this red, a blue, and then a bright yellow tracking dot at the very top. Really just kind of covering all the colors in the spectrum. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely unique and it definitely stands out. And last but certainly not least, the Steven Bach model. 
I'm a really big fan of the design on this one, actually. I love when 70-30 splits have like another line in them. I don't know if that, there's like a technical term for that, but I think this looks really clean. Something that also immediately stands out is that this has a base cup hole. The Chiblix mod did not. On the can itself, you have a couple wood burns. You have the lightning bolt here in the big cup, and then in kanji on the side of the big cup, uh, you have Steven's name written out. Okay, so now that we've covered all four of these, let's talk about the shape of the Ken, which is pretty unique. This is definitely one of the thinnest Kens uh, I've seen. It's not a bad thing, or a good thing really, it's just definitely unique. The fact that there's such little weight uh, in the Ken, and so much of it is in the Serato, I think it'll really make this a very fun one to play around with with Lunars. If you like the Kaizen Slim shape from Konami USA, uh, or even like the Squab shape from Analog, really any of the thinner sort of shapes out there, then definitely give this a try. For this video, uh, instead of doing my usual Sweets Prime Ken comparison, uh, I thought we should bring out my personal Active V3 uh, Pro model. The V3 shape was very, very similar to the Sweets Prime, just kind of the shape, like right here, is a bit different, but cup sizes are actually the same as the Sweets Prime. Instantly looking at them, you can see the V4 is definitely slimmer. So going from the V3 Ken to the V4, they've done a couple uh, improvements. They've increased the Serato width uh, to make it better for gunslingers. One of the other key differences is they improved the bevels on the new V4s. They're a bit wider and deeper than the previous ones, which I think will make it a lot better for stalls. Looking at the cup sizes, I'm pretty sure they've all just been bumped. Not by a lot, but definitely by a noticeable amount. So every single cup from the V3 is bumped up to the V4. First impression of it, it feels pretty balanced. Like the shape is definitely geared towards Lunars, but you also have the widened Serato and the updated bevel. And so I think it's gonna kill stalls and be really good for gunslingers too. That's just how I feel right now. Um, but I won't know until I actually play it. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, I kind of accidentally did that in my last review, the Nick Stodd mod. A lot of you seem to get value out of that for me playing it for a bit and then coming back, you know, probably this one will be a few days, uh, coming back and really letting you know how I feel about it after I played with it for a while um, and sort of getting to know the Kendama better and really see how it plays. So here we are, uh, four or five days after I shot that last bit, uh, and we're talking about the active Kendama V4 Elite. The paint quality is great. I would not change the paint. I love their sticky clear. Um, the quality is good. Lunar balance is good. Stalls are good. It's checking all the boxes. It doesn't do anything amazingly. Like it doesn't, you know, have insane qualities or anything like that, or a really unique design. I mean, they look good, but it's nothing amazing. But that's kind of what I like about it. The shape is really unique, and I'm having a lot of fun playing with it. Like I said, it doesn't do anything amazing, but it's very well-rounded, and it's just fun to play. Like, you can throw anything at this. Stalls, juggles, gunslingers, whatever you want to do, and this will perform very well for you. Active, I think, is doing a really good job at bringing a quality Kendama for not very much money. That's where I think this excels. I'm not saying it's only good because of the price point. It's a good Kendama, period, like compared to any Kendama. I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, big shout out to Active Ganama for sending me these to review. Uh, and I also want to give a quick plug shout out to Honed Media. It's a new platform for the Kendama community covering news, uh, the culture, reviews, kind of everything. And they're a really big part of the community and just do a lot of awesome things. All of my videos are now going to be on that website. Uh, all my past videos, all my future videos. And I'm definitely looking forward to partnering with them in future things. Uh, they're really awesome people, so definitely go check out the website and uh, support them. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.